We're coming to you from the exhibit hall at CRT meeting. This is Dr. Jay Widmer, um, gave an amazing talk about coronary microcirculatory dysfunction. We have some questions. In 2025, what should every interventional cardiologist know about coronary microcirculatory dysfunction? This year, I would say every interventionalist should at least be on the lookout. And if you have somebody with a good chest pain story, positive uh, stress test, and the clean coronaries, your radar should be heightened that you need to at least get them to somebody who knows how to test for this and because it's just crazy if we have these patients with these symptoms and we have the tools to test and we don't test them and don't treat them appropriately. And why is it important for us to look for these patients? Why should we be testing these patients for coronary microcirculatory dysfunction? So it's important to find these patients and treat them. One, uh, they do have real pathology. They do have uh, worse outcomes in terms of heart failure, hospitalizations, and uh, emergency department uh, readmittals. But the last thing is just the physical and mental and emotional strain that these patients have, thinking that they're not really sure why they have these symptoms and nobody can give them a, di a diagnosis and nobody can put them on the right therapies. That day-to-day -day strain on them, we've shown in studies after study, is really, really burdensome and really tricky. So if we can relieve that burden, uh, I think that we should do the, the simple test to do that. If we have patients in communities where they don't have access to coronary microcirculatory testing, whether non-invasive or invasive, what should they do for these patients? That's always really tough, and some people think that you have to have a ton of resources or a high-powered academic center. But currently, I work and live in a very rural uh, central Texas community, and we have those because really it's a basic physiology assessment designed and, and implemented by Abbott. So I don't think it should be that far apart uh, in terms of the testing. And most labs should be equipped with some basic assessment of coronary flow reserve or within probably about 100 miles of that. So I think it's important to know sort of where the referring centers are. How do people find these referral centers? Uh, so there is a microvascular network uh, and that website is available um, and that has patient uh, resources, it has provider resources, it has all the centers, all of the education, all the literature. It's a really nice one-stop shop and then also links to other uh, societies and other resources. So I would check out the microvascular network.